we give thanks to this wonderful, mighty. Yes, sir. We serve an awesome God. Amen. Yes, sir. A God that has put breath within us. Amen. Uh, we breathe his oxygen. We eat his food. We drink his water. Yes, sir. Uh, we walk in good health and we're in good strength. Even though sometimes we suffer with diabetes and high blood pressures and Amen. heart disease and all other things that, that might come. Yeah. But you're still here. Amen. And for that you all to be and be grateful and thankful. Yeah. You should feel that you owe the Lord something. Yeah. You know, you're not just here for nothing. Man. We need to just understand that, that there's a purpose for our being here. Amen. It's always good seeing our um, visitors. It's good seeing the Johnsons. Uh, we Amen. haven't seen them in so a long time, but any time that they grace our presence, All right. uh, it is certainly heartfelt. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're so kind to have JJ and other visitors that have come out. We've got our lieutenant from the jail, uh -huh. Lieutenant Williams, my brother-in-law. Uh, we always enjoy having him. I asked him to come, and he did uh, finally decide to do it once again. Amen. I want to say that we miss Brother Muse today. Uh -huh. Amen. He's not going to be with us. Um, uh, he's in Marks, and he made that announcement. We was out on last Lord's Day. We was in Laurel. We had such a wonderful time. Amen. Amen. This sister Tab to make it. Uh, sister Tab said, "Pray for her and pray for Peanut because he's having breathing problems this morning. But if she was able to make it, that she would make it. And so you know, we pray for little Peanut. We pray for his recovery. Amen. He's been going through so much ever since from the time uh, that he was born. Um." On um, yesterday, we had the presence of going to penalize uh, Miss Chick, known by name as those of us in the community. Amen. And certainly when I got there, I found out her real name after all of these years. Uh, and some of you did as well. I hear the laugh. I know what that means. Uh, Miss Leola Upshaw. You know, Carla. Uh, certainly, we uh, really enjoyed being a part of that, uh, trying to encourage and uplift the family in such a time. And to those of you who had taken the time to make it out, uh, Sister Dolly, you all put your mother away in good fashion. Amen. Uh, they came riding up on a horse and a buggy. A horse and a buggy, you can say. Uh, it was like, you wouldn't call it a trailer, but her casket was on the white horse with a black buggy that was carrying it. And I mean, that part of it was simply amazing. Amen. You know, I got up and I told him that, man, this has never been done in Tonica County, Mississippi. Black person at that? We don't even remember the time it was ever done for a white person. Uh, but certainly that was amazing. Amen. And we just hope and pray that something was said that was inspiring to someone, that they had a chance to hear God's word. Amen. Uh, you gave her a wonderful salute. Mm -hmm. I want to say about Facebook. Facebook is going to be the death so many people because it has taken the lives of so many already. Yes, Amen. You know, we need to be careful what we're posting on Facebook, especially when we have it in for someone. Amen. You know, sometimes there are girlfriends and boyfriends and husbands and wives and kinfolk and all of these. We all fall out on Facebook. Uh -huh. And we want to post all the bad information about how we feel. There's so many people out here clicking. Yes, sir. I mean, people are not in themselves. Sometimes we call them to click. There was a young woman on them on the 22nd, and her she was 22 years old, 
And on the 22nd, she posted on Facebook about her boyfriend, husband, whoever he was. And she was talking all kinds of things, saying, well, I need a real man. I'm tired of a boy and, you know, need someone to take care of their child, their son. And uh, he stole my car. He got my keys. And I don't get and calling them all kinds of names. And about four days later, the young man holds the young woman hostage. She posted her last video of her sitting there holding her one-year-old child. And she was singing John Legend's song. What is it? All of me. All of you. I wanted to play that so bad up in here. Because I know that it goes along with what happened. Yes, sir. While she was there holding her child and singing along with the song, not knowing that a few days from now would be her last day. All of this nonsense, all of this violence, all this killing. You know, we talk about a little fella. I called and asked Taylor how did the funeral go while we was out of town. I called her because she stayed to go to her classmate's funeral. She said, there's a lot of people here. I said, is it sad? She said, yes, it's sad. All of us are crying. When people leave this world, and we're all going to leave one day, Amen. that means that we're not coming back down here. Amen. You know, it leaves an empty space in all of our hearts. It touched the lives of so many people. Young people, I say once again, as everyone in the community needs to start saying, those gone down. Amen. Amen. Put them down. Old people, put those guns down. If you're not standing in defense and protecting your family, your own life, you have no business there. They approve the law of the walking and carrying, toting guns, but signs are up in some places. Don't come in here if you got one on. Don't you know if you put one on, you're just about ready to use it? All someone got to do is just say the wrong thing, push you, rub you the wrong way. We need to be careful. Because that life is going to find you or someone in a grave. And when we talk about guns and bullets, they don't have no certain names on them. Amen. People go shooting bullets all in the night where we live here. I mean, bullets, I, the first thing I do is run to the telephone, calling the police, hoping someone come in time that they might help someone, or even stop someone from shooting a bullet in someone's home, my home, your home. Amen. Crazy folks. I mean, people are just crazy. Joke, joke, good man. <laughs> They're doing things without a conscience, not knowing and not caring who it hurt. Amen. We must be careful. Amen. Our world has changed. Yeah. And our world is constantly changing each and every day. We may as well get used to it. Yeah. We must learn to adapt to change because Many times we try to change God's word by our life. God's word is not going to change. And there is no excuse for sin. So we must stop and learn to stop excusing ourselves. You know, the Lord said in Matthew 5 and 18, before one job a one tittle before one crossing of the T, before one dotting of the I, before one of these things change, heaven and earth will pass away first. God said before his word changed, heaven and earth will pass first. You don't want this world to pass without you making a decision to serve God. Yes, because God's word will stay the same. Amen. 
I want to use for a subject here this morning, and after the message of that particular chapter, the message will indeed be yours. It will be taken from the book of Luke, the 19th chapter. The subject I want to use is today, salvation is come to you. Today, salvation is come to you. Salvation can come into your life at any time. It can come to you at those most unexpected moments. Some might ask the question, what are those unexpected moments? There are moments that you have decided to come here this morning. You may have never known that you were going to make a decision to turn your life around, that God would help you in that decision. You didn't just come here by accident. Amen. Many people, you're probably sitting there, some of you probably thinking now, how did I get in here? I'm sure at this time, that's not your thought because the Holy Spirit can fix that. You ought to be thanking God that you're here for this day. It gives you a chance to hear his word because if you have not made that right decision in your life, this may be your last moment. You say, what is an unexpected time? There could be an accident down the highway or on some freeway. There could be some bullet from a gun and it's just waiting for you. It's waiting for me. We never know where death is. But one thing in life we've taken to believe that we're all going to die. Amen. Amen. The thing is that we need to be right with God. Amen. We must position ourselves and get our lives intact with Him. Sometimes you think about others. People that have already gone before us. Mm-hmm. If many of them had the opportunity and the chance that you now have, they would probably be begging God for another time Amen. to Amen. get it right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They would be pleading to him for a second chance, knowing what we're going through in this life. Amen. Uh-huh. Read sometime Luke chapter 16. you see that story there. Old man lived his life down here, dressing well every day, looking good, yeah. eating good, mm-hmm. not caring about others. All right. Beggar came to his table and he was full of sores. All he desired were the crumbs yeah. that fell from the rich man's table. He said, More with the dog chain. The dogs had more concern over this big and old person, a young person, whatever he was, he had more concern about that man uh-huh. with the sword yep. that he licked them. Yep. The dog licked the man's sword, trying to aid and comfort him. It reminded me of the Millie. Millie licks on mama all day and night. Uh-huh. <laughs> I call all the dogs Dr. Millie. I said, Dr. Millie, every time, every, every time she run up on my leg, licking my leg. I said, Dr. Millie. Millie turn around and look at that. Yeah, you doctor. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, dogs know where you're hurt. Yeah. They know when you're pain. Mama leg pain all the time. She said, I mean, she's licking in that right spot to keep on <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Shout they don't think that's funny. It's not funny. It's real. It's real. Amen. You know, but these things in life, they happen. We're going to be gone. We're going to leave this world. There could be something even in us right now. Something that are eating away at us and we don't even know it. Some cancer. Some bacterial infection. Our life could have some kind of AIDS. Mm-hmm. 
We probably got contaminated some kind of, it don't always have to be sexual. We're so afraid of people with AIDS and all of these catchable diseases till that we try to warn ourselves not to go near it. Amen. Many times we never know how we might become affected by it. Blood transfusion and all of these things have happened that some people got it and all this, some through sexual activity, some because of sharing needles and all of this and using the same needles and all of that. All of these things are prevalent in our world. All of these things happen and they're taking place because of these different reasons. But how often have we said, I don't want to go like that. I don't want to suffer like this. What if we could choose our own dimes of death after how we would leave this world? Which one would you choose? Many of us, we still would choose. <laughs> because we're not ready to go. You know, we want to go when God calls us, you know, but we just don't want to go certain ways. Most of us say, I just want to go in my sleep. I wish I could go in my sleep too. <laughs> But it's not my choice. Amen. You know, some of us are going to see ourselves suffering and dying. Yes, sir. Knowing that we had this moment and we didn't take advantage of it. Amen. That's going to be the hard time. Yes. Yes. That's going to be the worst decision in your life that you've ever made. Amen. Knowing you had a chance at salvation and you did nothing about it. Uh -huh. So many of us were just too high. Look in Luke chapter 19. We just got beside ourselves. Too high to a point that even God cannot save us. Jesus said, what if you would gain this whole world and yet lost your soul? Or what shall you give in exchange for your soul? You brought nothing into this world. It's definitely that you're not taking anything out. Some people say, oh, he was buried in his car. So what? <laughs> he was buried with all of his money, all of his gold, all of his jewelry, the her jewelry and gold. What? What does it mean? You go whenever the years have passed, no matter how many there be, you go and you dig up that old grave. If you can ever find it, you will find that the gold, the silver, the car, the man in it, and everything else is still there. Amen. It's still there. What leads from this body is going to be our spirit. Yes, our soul will stand in that day of judgment Amen. to be judged by God. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We will stand before him. Listen at the Bible though. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. And he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. Mm -hmm. He ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree, right. mm -hmm. just to see him, mm -hmm. for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, mm -hmm. make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. All right. All right. He made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Amen. Today the Lord is more than proud that you're here. Today, the Lord is more than proud that if we have not made the right decision about serving him, he's happy that we're here. All right. Angels in heaven can rejoice today. The church can rejoice today. Even you can rejoice today All right, by choosing to make the right decision. Man. Zacchaeus had heard that Jesus was coming that way. All time we read the Bible, we read about rich folk. You think about rich folk today, they were just like that then. Uh -huh. But only some of them wanted to get to know Jesus Christ. All right. And they were pointed out in scripture. 
he ran. Just because he was a little short, fellas, I care. The Bible said he was short in stature. And the crowd was all in front of him and Jesus was coming and he couldn't see because of the crowd was there. And the Bible said he ran and jumped up into a sycamore tree. Just to see Jesus pass that way. And being that the Lord knows everything, he knows all about us. He knew that Zacchaeus was them. He knows that you're here. Yeah. He knows that you stand in need of him. Yeah. But are you doing everything it takes just to see him? All right. Zacchaeus did. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said, Jesus, when he seen him, he called him down. He said to him, Zacchaeus, come down. Today I must abide with you at your house. Faith, salvation has come to your house. All right. Salvation is right here now, and you don't even know it. Yes. Come on. Come on. Today can be your day. But if you walk out as you came in, being the same person, you may have had your last opportunity. We never know. The only story that will be told about you in the story in judgment, John 12, 48, Jesus said, He that rejected me and received not my word, he has one to judge him. The word that I've spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So these same words are coming up all over again. As we conclude, look at verse number 7 on down to 15. And when they saw it, they all murmured saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him for both. Man. Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house. All right. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham, oh, yeah. for the son of man is come to seek and to save Man. that which was lost. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear he said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called ten of his servants and to delivered unto them ten pounds. He said unto them, occupy till I come. But his citizen hated him and sent a, a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that when he returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. All right. Listen at the Lord. Zacchaeus had his greatest opportunity in life. They're talking with the master mm -hmm. about his salvation. Right. Other people were standing around discussing Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. That's what people did. Some of them seeing you coming here this, this morning. Someone is out there talking about you. All right. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, they're talking about you. But in Jesus' case, he went out where they was. All right. And as he went with them, Jesus left the scene where he was and he told the man, look, I'm coming on down to your house and we're going to sit and we're going to talk and we're going to eat a meal and all of this. And people sat around and said, look at him, look at him. They're talking about Jesus. Look at him. He's going to sit down with a man that is a sinner. All right. People see you going 
talking to people who are not saved. They have everything to say about you. They thought Jesus drank. Yeah, every time you hear people talking in the world, they well, they say, well, Jesus drank. You know, therefore I didn't drink. You know, the Bible didn't say Jesus drank. He didn't say Jesus drank. Every time you read about him, it said that he was going to be guest with someone that was a sinner. All right. And because other people were sitting around there drinking, they accused him of drinking. You know, you go and be with someone, they're going to accuse you too. Yeah. I don't care how many cars look like yours, if it parked at a certain house, it's yours. You know? you know, it's yours. Amen. It's yours. And you don't have to prove it. Amen. You don't have to prove it at all. But listen, Jesus said, wisdom is justified of a children. Wisdom is justified of a children. Jesus said that people can accuse me a lot of things, but all you got to do is just look at who I am and who I serve. You're not going to find me drinking. You know, at least not Jesus. At least not Jesus. Let me just say that since I said that. Remember Jesus when he was young. His first miracle that he performed was that he turned water into wine. At a marriage. Young man turning water into wine. His mother and father had taken him to this marriage feast. And you know at wedding, they're gonna drink, they're gonna sing songs, they're gonna have their party, they're gonna dance, and everything else. But Jesus didn't say to his mother, long way, mother, you know we should be going over here. You know the folks gonna be drinking and partying and dancing. You know, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. He was under the direction of his mother and father. All right. So when the people had run out of wine, his mother may return to him and say, son, right. they have no more wine. Yes. What mama want to convince their child to participate in something like this anyway? Right. You know, they have no more wine. She said, so what? What do I got to do with it? <laughs> he said, well, she said, well, I'm sure you can make them song. He said, well, my time had not come yet. So his mother told his disciples, y'all just stay right there. And whatever he tell you to do, you do it. So Jesus told them later on, look, go and get these five big old pots that's sitting around. Bring them up here, bring them up here, bring all these pots. I want you to fill all them big bad boys up to the top. <laughs> you know, with, with water. With water, he said. All right. They filled them up. Yeah. Jesus came and he touched them and he prayed over them and he turned water to wine. Uh -huh. And the Bible said afterward, when the king and his wife and others had risen, and the cupbearers and all of them, I'm sure, were there and they tasted the wine to see was it good and all this and when they all had drinking, they said, this is some good stuff. They said, this is some good stuff. They told the Lord, you, you know, you saved the best for last. They called it new. It was new. It had not been fermented. It had not been settled and aged and uh, put all the yeast in and all the other things that would ever go along in it. Brother Bond know how to make it, but listen. Uh, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, yeah, I'm just saying. Amen, amen. We did some things before that we hadn't forgot. Amen. Some people really made wine back in their day. And, you know, they hadn't, they, they had, they have not forgot they just don't make it anymore. Amen. Amen, brother. <laughs> but listen, but, but listen. They all said it was good. It was different. It wasn't like that old stuff. That old stuff you can drink and you know you feel that little jiggy and all that. You know it wasn't that kind. All right. This kind kept you level. So when we call that grape juice, it says one hundred percent grape juice, meaning that it's the fruit of the vine. It wine too. It just don't make you intoxicated, and you can drink a whole bottle, you still won't get drunk of that. You know, 
It's good that long people ain't adding water to it. It's good. You know, so that's still wine, so, you know, just sell for that. Amen. If you're not a Christian, you need to be. You say, what must I do to be saved? You must hear the gospel of God. Romans 10, 